So you knew all along and you pretended to be in the dark. You knew my father has been molesting me. He took away my innocence. He robbed me of my childhood and you kept quiet and did nothing about it. How wicked can you be? What makes you any different from him? What if I was your daughter? Would you stand and watch a man molest me for five years and you do absolutely nothing about it? I hate you! Ginika was married to Unamdi for five years but was unable to have children for him despite all her efforts. She took as many herbs as she could but still there was no sign of pregnancy. Five years later, Unamdi became tired of Ginika's childlessness and his family stepped in to save the day by sending Ginika packing. Ginika left her husband's house despite her pleadings to her in-laws to give her a little more time to enable her bear her husband a child. Six months later, luck shined on Ginika. She met a very handsome man named Okafo. Okafo loved Ginika so much and a short while after they met, they got married. Four years into their marriage, Ginika was still unable to bear a child for Okafo. She did everything within her power. She took all the fertility herbs and drank all the concussions she could lay her hands on. Okafo truly loved Ginika and was willing to stay with her with or without a child. Ginika became really worried and desperate about her condition. Her childlessness was becoming a stigma. Oftentimes, she would go to the neighboring village where her mom, Ozioma, the famous midwife, lived to get some herbs. One fateful day, Ginika went to visit her mom to collect some fertility herbs. It was getting late, so she needed to hurry back home as she had told Okafo that she would be coming home before nightfall. As she was walking down a lonely path, Ginika could sense that someone was hiding behind the trees. She quickly hastened her steps, but before she knew what was happening, a tall dark figure stood in front of her and before she could scream for help, he pounced on her and forced himself on her, sexually assaulting her. Ginika laid on the ground, crying, but no one came to her rescue. After a while, she picked herself up, looked at the road leading to her husband's village and the road leading to her mother's village. She was confused as to where to turn to. She wasn't sure what to do, either to go back to her mom or go to her husband's house. Finally, she decided to go to her husband's house. On getting home, Ginika narrated all that happened to Okafo. He became infuriated. He took a machete, heading to the road where Ginika was assaulted. But she begged him to turn back as the man who assaulted her would have left the scene of the incident. One week later, Ginika noticed that Okafo's attitude towards her was getting cold. She thought it was probably due to the stress from the farm's work. But it got worse as time went on. Okafo would not eat her food or sleep on the same bed with her. He continued to give her the silent treatment for no reason. Ginika began to regret telling Okafo about the incident. She knew that her husband's sudden change in attitude was obviously linked to the sexual assault she experienced. She decided that she would give Okafo time to get over it. She was also angry that Okafo has refused to feel her pain from the traumatic experience she had. Instead, he is punishing her for it. Two months later, Ginika found out that she was pregnant. She knew deep down in her heart that the baby was definitely not for Okafo, as he hadn't been with her over two months. When Okafo found out that Ginika was pregnant, he told her to get rid of the abomination she was carrying or leave his house. Ginika has never been pregnant in her entire life. This was her first chance at being a mother and she did not know if it would be her last. She begged Okafo to reconsider but Okafo had made his decision 
and it was left for Ginika to make hers. Ginika decided to move to her mother's village with the pregnancy and move out of Okafor's house. She could not bear the thought of killing the one thing she had always longed for. At least, now people would know that she is not barren. Ginika stayed with her mom, Ozioma, the midwife, throughout the period of her pregnancy. One fateful night, Ginika went into labor and delivered a very beautiful baby girl. She was so beautiful like the evening star. Ginika looked up and thanked the gods for blessing her with such a beautiful daughter. But her heart broke into a million pieces when she remembered the circumstances surrounding the child's birth. She missed Okafo so much and wished she could go back to her husband. The following morning, a woman in labor by the name Ifoma was brought in by her husband to be attended to by Ozioma, the midwife. Ginika was inside, breastfeeding her little baby when she heard a voice that sent shivers running down her spine. She said to herself, I have heard this voice before. Ginika peeped through the window of the room she was in and lo and behold, there stood the man who assaulted her a few months ago. Ginika began to tremble in fear. As Ozioma began to prepare Ifoma for delivery, he instructed her husband to wait outside. Ginika called her mom into her room and told her that the man who just brought in his wife was the same man that assaulted her. Ozioma was shocked to her bones. Anozie is the most respected blacksmith in this village. Why would he stoop so low to assault a woman? Ginika advised her mom to act like she knew nothing and go back to attend to Ifoma. Three hours into labor, Ifoma delivered a bouncing baby boy, but he arrived dead. It was a still birth. After delivering the child, Ifoma fell into a deep sleep. As Ozuma was about to go break the news to Anozie, Ginika stood in her way and told her that she had a better idea. Ginika swapped her baby with Ifoma's dead baby. I can't take care of this child on my own, mama. She needs to live and grow up in a stable home and I cannot offer her that. At least, if I do not have the burden of this child, I can go back to my husband Okafo and we shall continue with our lives and this baby will grow up with her biological father. Ginika cried as she handed over her child to Ozioma. Ozioma stepped out of the hut and told Anozie that his wife had given birth to a bouncing baby girl. Anozie was overwhelmed with happiness. He quickly ran inside Ozioma's hut to see his bundle of joy. Ginika wept as she watched Anozie and Ifoma take away her child. She thought to herself that it was all for a greater good. She will be back with her husband Okafo and they can have their own children together now that it is proven that she has the capacity to bear a child. One week later, Ginika packed her things back to her husband's village and on getting to Okafo's compound, she met a young pregnant woman cooking in her kitchen. She was confused. Okafo does not have any female sibling, so she decided to go into the house and she met Okafo by the door. She told him that she was back to work things out. Okafo watched Ginika say all she had to say. Ginika then asked him, I saw a lady in the kitchen. Who is she? Finally, Okafo spoke. I am sorry, my dear Ginika. The lady you saw in the kitchen is my new wife, and I am sure you also saw that she is pregnant. We are expecting our first child. You chose the child of a rapist over me, over our marriage, over our love, over what we shared, so I decided to move on because I thought you have moved on from the marriage as well. Dinika fell on the ground and wept uncontrollably. There was nothing she could do. Okafo had not only moved on, he had a child on the way with his new wife. She had lost it all. Her marriage was gone. She exchanged her child, the only thing that would have given her joy, for a dead baby, all because she wanted to save her marriage. Now, she's left with nothing but shattered hopes and a broken heart. She packed her things and went back to her mother's village. Ozioma, after hearing all that has happened to her daughter, cried painfully. 
she felt so much pity for her daughter. A few months later, Ginika decided to start a basket making business. She started selling in the village market. Oftentimes, she would see Ifoma and her daughter Chineye in the market, and the feeling of regret will wash over her. Three years later, she found out that Ifoma was very ill. She became really worried. Chineye was only three years old, and Ifoma had no one to help her. So, after the close of the market, Ginika would take some food items to Ifoma's house and also help her to do some chores and buy some sweets for Chineye. Ifoma was really grateful for Ginika's show of kindness. Ifoma's situation got worse and Ginika became closer to the family. She was always around and ready to lend a helping hand. Anozie was very grateful to Ginika for helping him out with Ifoma as he wouldn't have been able to do it alone with his busy schedule at his blacksmith shop. A few months later, Ifoma died. Anozie was devastated. Ginika would always show up to console Anozie and make food for him and Chineye. Little did he know that Ginika was doing all this because of her daughter Chineye. Two years later, Anozie felt that it would be right if he marries Ginika so that Chineye would have a mother figure in her life. Anozie and Ginika got married and Ginika made sure she never gave Anozie a clue as to who she really is. She took good care of Chineye when Anozie was absent, but tried to reduce the display of her motherly love to Chineye when Anozie was around. She was scared that she might become overwhelmed with the motherly love she has for Chineye and her cover will be blown. And if Anozie discovers that she was the lady he assaulted a few years ago, the guilt will make him cut her off completely from him and his daughter, then she will lose both ways. But then again, even if she confesses the truth, no one will ever believe that she is Chinayen's biological mother. The only person that could have told everyone the truth was Ozioma, the midwife, Ginika's mother. But she passed on two years ago. Anozie was a respected man in the village and the last thing she would want to do is challenge him. She knows that Anozie is capable of making sure she never sees her child again. So Ginika had to hide her true identity and her intentions but unfortunately she got carried away with hiding her identity that she forgot her duty as a mother and the fact that the man she married is a beast for nine years anozie kept on abusing and molesting chineye under ginika's nose and she felt helpless finally ginika was able to confess who she really was to chineye with all the evidence against him, it was obvious that Anozie was guilty of incest, an abominable act punishable by death. Anozie was dragged to the village square, tied to a tree to be stoned to death by an angry crowd. The king urged every young girl going through an issue similar to Chinayen's to speak up as they will be protected and adequately cared for. That same day, after enough inquiry and investigation, eight men were stoned to death alongside Anozie. Chineye thanked Arinze for saving her and the other young girls who were dying secretly. She also thanked Arinze for being a voice to those who could not speak up for themselves. Four years later, Chineye and Arinze got married and gave birth to a bouncy baby boy. Not long after Chineye put to bed, King Kalu fell ill and joined his ancestors. Arinze became the king of the village and Chineye became the queen. She used her position as a queen to fight against all forms of sexual abuse and molestation of children and women. What moral lesson did you learn from this video? Please, I would like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you in my next video.